here's the dollar vigilante, Jeff Berwick, uh, came out with a video, and it, this is actually a comment, but I think he would agree with it. My brain says gold is garbage. Value is who you are, not what you own. Gold is rock. And I thought, well, that was an interesting comment from a follower of Jeff Berwick. And look at what the Bible says. I know a lot of people have put their hopes in gold, but the Bible tells me this. I'm into end time in a practical way. Don't be afraid. Read what James said, the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. Chapter 5, verse 3, the half-brother of Jesus says, Your gold and silver have corroded. Now, is corrosion a good thing or a bad thing? This is bad. This is, the, the, the Scripture is not saying very good things about gold in the end times. And the value of gold has been going down and down. And their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire, and you have laid up treasure in the last days. Multiple other translations say, gold, your gold is rusted. Well, that doesn't really make sense because gold doesn't rust. That's the whole property of gold. So what does that mean? It seems to me to be a prophecy that you cannot fall in love with gold in the last days. It's not going to be the store of value. If gold can rust, which it can't, it cannot, then it seems to indicate a decline in the price of gold. So the gold bugs, the truthers, the, even the prophecy community, they love to say, and they've been waiting year after year, decade after decade, and they say, gold is going to go to 5,000 an ounce. But they're all disappointed. It hasn't happened. And I think maybe we should pay attention to what James says. You know, the Bible says gold is dirt, literally, for God. Gold are like, you know, street pavement in heaven. Revelation 21, verse 21, about the new Jerusalem. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. In other words, gold is dirt. So don't fall in love with gold. I think it's, it's shiny, it's pure, it's interesting, has many applications. If you want to own a little bit, okay. But if you think that's going to be your salvation financially, I don't really see the indication from the Bible that that's true. So, I mean, there it is. That's what you're going to be walking on. So if you're storing up gold, you know, one day you get to heaven, you say, wow, it's plentiful gold. I'm, I'm walking on gold. Why did I put my hopes in this? Right now, cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, is more precious than silver and gold. The price, you can see, of the white and yellow lines, that's silver and gold, are declining. And the safe haven right now is cryptocurrency. So you can see, in my experience, a lot of Muslim money pouring in to cryptocurrency. A question we got to ask before we go is, is Bitcoin a bubble? Every mama and papa out there who doesn't invest is probably saying it's a bubble. And that's what they've been saying since it hit a 500, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, and it just flew right through 10,000, and it's edging to 20,000 US. So is it a bubble? Well, here's a graph that looks very scary. The price of Bitcoin on this graph, which is, um, you know, I mean, the measure is, the access is not exactly right because the currencies are all different, but it looks pretty scary. There's a Bitcoin making a hockey stick rise up to the top. Compare that to the green, which is the tulip mania of 1634 to 1637. Obviously, tulip doesn't have, you know, intrinsic value, but there was a big hype and people bought into it. And this thing that, you know, decays very quickly was bought at outrageous prices. And then the bubble burst, people lost money, people got depressed, of course. And then if we go to, uh, let's see, okay, the tech bubble, that's in light blue. Starting from 1994, there was a bubble inflating. It finally burst and uh, finished bursting in 2002. That, we call that the dot-com bubble. And a lot of people lost money in that cycle, okay, in that financial investment. So is this another one? 
It's just another one. It could be, right? But how about this? Is the US dollar a bubble? Hmm? When you can print money like this and increase debt to now it looks like $23 trillion, would that make the US economy itself a bubble? The purchasing power of the US dollar declines like a reverse hockey stick. Is the Australian property market a bubble? This is a graph of the Australian property price from 1880 projected to 2020. And you know what? I've been here for 20 years and from the first year I came here everybody said Australian property is overpriced. And we just, and people just bought and bought and it kept going up. Then there was the 2008 financial crisis. People said it's going to be a bubble and nothing happened over here. And the price was very steady and it kept going up and up. So when's the right time to buy property? Apparently now in Australia. Right? But the graph looks very scary. It's rocketing just like the graph they like to show for Bitcoin. In fact, when you compare us to three other markets, the UK, uh, US and Canada, median dwelling price is very high, the highest for Australia compared to any other country in the world. Our household debt as a percent of GDP is the highest out of the industrial world. So there's a simple world average, there's a 25 to 75 uh, percent tile distribution, uh, in trading, they might call that the Bollinger Band right there. And we're like way outside the Bollinger Band. So we live with a lot of debt in Australia. Everybody is spending money they don't have. Are we in a bubble? You know, it seems like everybody is heading to a double. So, bu so bubble. So which bubble? We're heading to a double or a bubble. Which one do you want, okay? I'd rather go for the double. Is fiat currency itself a bubble? The truth is, every fiat currency has become worthless. I mean, who uses this German Nazi currency anymore? How about this? This was money when I lived in France. I remember carrying this in my pocket. It's worthless today. It looks like, you know, cartoon drawing today. You can't use that to buy anything. It's gone. The franc is gone. How about this one? Even an older franc. The Banque de France. Five, I don't know what it is. Nouveau franc. Worthless today. Like a nice piece of artwork. How about this one? Venezuela, Venezuelan Bolivar. Started falling in 2014. There's now a cash crisis due to government you know, government hyperinflation. In 2016, the U.S. Uh, $2 was equal to 20,000 Bolivares. In 2017, the same $2 is worth 200,000 Bolivares. And guess what? If you lived there, the private banks would not allow ATM withdrawal of more than 30,000 Bolivares. That was, at that time, $2.88. And the amazing thing that I find is, when you're here in Australia and you need to withdraw money, they ask you questions. When you need to make a payment or you just want to have your own cash, you will find out how they will put strict control on you. We are not that far off and that much better. I think we are better. I think we live in a better country. But don't kid yourself. Governments can inflate money any time. The government-run banks at that time would not allow their own citizens to take more than 10,000 bolivares out. That's 96 cents. So where did people go? They went to cryptocurrency. Are they poor? Are they in trouble? Yes. And so they fled to what they considered incorruptible, immutable, and they went to Bitcoin. How about the Bank of Zimbabwe? My goodness. This is the first $100 trillion bill that you've ever seen, right? Worth $300 when it came out in 2013, and now it's completely worthless. 
due to the corruption of the bank. Chinese money, any country you've gone to, every single piece of fiat currency has become worthless. So are they all bubbles? Apparently they all are. This is a, you know, a big sign in a Japanese shopping mall says Bitcoin can be used for payment. There it is. There's someone showing an example on TV. They go to buy something and they're paying in Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's very funny. When you pay for something, it's 0 0.00336. All right? So money that has value and it's in fact um, increasing in value. So you pay in tiny little decimals. Bitcoin can be bought from certain ATMs now. Uh, if America wants to man manipulate, they're a little bit behind because Bitcoin is very popular. It seems that um, CNBC says that the global trade volume uh, of Bitcoin, Japan accounts for half of the global trade volume. America is only at a quarter. So we in the English-speaking world are actually behind the Muslims and the Japanese and the Koreans. So I don't think that any one institution in the Western power, Western world, has the ability to completely, you know, manipulate this. In fact, Bitcoin is so popular, there are Bitcoin celebrities. This is Mai Fujimoto. She's called Miss Bitcoin in Japan. And she just goes around educating people how to invest in Bitcoin and how to use Bitcoin. This is my take on it, okay? Fundamentals. If you like to look at fundamentals, there are 33 million millionaires in the world. Let me say that again. How many people have a million dollars or more? There are 33 million millionaires. There are 21 million bitcoins when it's all eventually mine. That means there are not enough bitcoins for every, one, every millionaire to own one bitcoin. Put that in perspective. The truth is, right now, many Bitcoins have already been taken up by tech geeks and young early adopters. And when the millionaires want to come in, there will not be enough for them to have even one.